this particular location here at Lower Hess Park has taken many years. Um, I was mayor last time in 2013, so it's five years now, when we were really working very closely. I was working closely at the time with uh, the four gentlemen from the Pacific View Homeowners Association that were really instrumental in helping guide the direction. Our wonderful staff came in. Corey has been fantastic, Corey Linder. But it's, it's really John Freeman and Les Chapin and Jim Moore and Noel Park, who is currently the president. These gentlemen have, they put tireless amount of time into making sure that this would in fact be what we determined at the time was a priority for the city. Less is more. So this is a passive park. It, what's really, really awesome is that land is so precious here and to see another place where residents can hike and just enjoy the beauty is amazing. It is and, and um, it, it's wonderful to have this opportunity down at this location while the playground is up at Upper Hess Park. And if you look at years from now and decades from now, as children and become adults, they will remember this location, that this was preserved for them and for their children and for their grandchildren. So I'm really honored and humbled to be here and to be mayor this year again while this activity is taking place. It's actually very sentimental for me. And, and we'll see a very special dedication as well. Yes, we will. A very special dedication. I'm really looking forward to this. Corey, this project has really been a long time coming, um, but again, it's such an amazing place where people get to really see the nature of the city and it's preserved. Tell us about this project and just it's coming together. Uh, it's been a, a long few years, um, but it, I think it even dates be before I started here back in 2013. Uh, but it's come a long way working with the community and coming up with the balance of uh, not necessarily active, but a place for people to come out. Uh, let the kids get dirty a little bit, have them uh, uh, get back into outdoor play where uh, we're not, we really won't try to tell too many people to get out of there. We want them to get in there, experience, chase that lizard, take a look at things and uh, explore a little bit more. You, know, you talked about this being sort of you know a long time coming and even before you were here. It must be very rewarding to see something like this come into fruition. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's a lot of work. I mean, you get to this point today and you think, okay, this is good. I mean, this is nice. But then you look back at the hours of workshops, of meetings, of, of just constantly trying to figure things out. And it's, uh, I mean, it does, it makes it all the better and it makes all the more rewarding. It's really cool too because like we're here today and there's people hiking and just enjoying it as we speak. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good, it's a great extension of Upper Hess. Um, there's people up there that walk that uh, uh, trail up there religiously. And uh, what I'd like to do in the future is really more uh, programmatically, but even have making these some healthy trails uh, so people understand they know you know how far they're walking you know where they're where they're uh, uh, you know their, their count should be uh, and just get it so people understand it and increase their loop from up there come on down here get the heart rate going and going back up and I know there's a very special dedication that will be here forever actually <laughs> this is true uh, we've got uh, a plaque that here will recognize not only the council, but uh, we've also have one that kind of recognizes the, uh, the the four gentlemen that we worked with extensively on this whole project. So, and hopefully for more in the future. I'd like to welcome everyone to the ribbon cutting uh, for the Lower Hess Park Improvement Project. Ten months ago, we started. Uh, uh, we had a groundbreaking here, right over there, and uh, it doesn't seem like it was that long ago, but uh, this is what we end up with, and. It, it, the, this project as a whole has taken us a little while longer. Um, however, in working with the community, uh, I believe we uh, got to a great, great point and a great park. The combined effort and dedication of city council, the staff from all the city departments, LA County Regional Parks and Open Space District, the volunteers, and plenty of motivated residents, uh, they all helped to make this park into a reality. The difference between what the park looks like now and how it looked last year is pretty remarkable. Um, if you all recall, the sea of uh, tumbleweeds. <laughs> Lower Hess Park, which has been overlooked and underappreciated for far too long, is finally taking its place as one of the jewels in the city's impressive collection of parks and open space. A few of the improvements that we did make here were an improved accessible trail system, uh, native and drought tolerant plantings, 
more picnic areas, an enhanced gravel lot, and naturalistic border figures for kids and adults to play on. This is one place where we want you to kind of get out there and get a little dirty. I, uh, none of this would have been possible without the ongoing support of our uh, city council. And I want to thank you all gentlemen here, and as well as the mayor, uh, we appreciate it. And again, uh, it makes it all worth it coming up here and uh, it, enabling us to open this back up to the public. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the, the entire Pacific View uh, Homeowners Association, uh, particularly Les Chapin, Jim Moore, John Freeman, and current president, Noel Park, for their tireless dedication and perseverance. Uh, three out of the four are here today, I believe. And I'd like to have uh, Noel come up here and say a few words. Well, thank you, Corey. Um, this all started in October of 2009 at Les Chapin's house when the then current council members and city manager invited us as the Homeowners Association to come and review the proposals for Lower Hess Park. And to be quite honest with you, we, we could curb our enthusiasm. It was thought then to be a pretty intense, active recreation facility and frankly, based on what this cost, it, I'm sure it would have cost several million dollars to do it. Um, and when the, when the council sort of turned over, um, the council looked at the cost estimates and said, we're not doing that. Um, so go back to the drawing board and come up with a downsized project that we can afford to do and council directed the staff to work with the homeowners association which we deeply appreciate I mean we'd lobbied long and hard over it long before that so we had a profile but then the staff very responsibly worked with us we had meetings and meetings and meetings and finally came up with this much simplified and downsized plan um, and there was a famous council meeting where there was a little contention about what was going to happen and the mayor to her everlasting credit said wait a minute less is more let's take care of what we have and let's do things that are compatible with the neighborhoods and lo and behold that's what happened because staff took that direction to heart and they they came back and worked with us and uh, you know I think we have a low intensity thing here and, and as the result here you won't see the total results for two or three years because these native plants are fairly slow growing plants and, and if you're not familiar with them or haven't worked around them you'll be surprised how big they get they will cover a lot of the, of the area and, and myself having a background with the land conservancy and you know being interested in California native plants I belong to the Native Plant Society and so on for many years when I came out and finally saw it being planted and saw the plant palette that's here, I was just extremely pleased. I mean, some people don't understand it, but as it matures and they get bigger, it's just going to be more beautiful. So, uh, and sets a grand example of water conservation in these troubled times. Um, in fact, I've suggested to the city staff that we might look into trying to interpret these plants. Corey and I have talked a lot about it, put out some signs that explain what they are and why it's important to have them. Could be a very educational thing for people and, and I think as people can name them and know what they are, there's more enthusiasm for them. So, you know, I mean, this is just a great success and, and it's, uh, as I've said before, as a longtime resident of the city of Los Angeles, you know, it's a, a pleasure and a source of constant amazement to see the, the responsiveness of the, of the mayor and the city council to, to the local citizens and, and the, you know, that philosophy flows to the staff and uh, Mr. Wilmore equally is responsive to, the, to us and friendly to us and so on. So um, there's a level of, of working together and, and involvement between the citizens and the, and the city staff and elected officials here that it really dazzles me coming from where I come from. So thanks, so many thanks. We have so many friends here today. It's great to see you all. Um, you know, the, the mayor acknowledged Les Chapin and John Freeman, and John Freeman especially just 
exhibited tremendous leadership through this process. Uh, he gets more credit for it than I do, if, to be quite fair. And Les has been in the in the game since the day one, so they've they've really really worked hard on this. So thanks again, everybody. We really appreciate it. Um, of course, we have fantasies of doing the rest of the park, but you know we can talk about that later. <laughs> uh, thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'd like to welcome Michelle Nishide to the podium. Uh, Michelle is with our locally based Movoto Condo Real Estate Group. That's yes. That, right? Yes. Good. Uh, she'd like to recognize the city on the opening of this. Yes. Park. I'm here with my partner. Um, Come on my up. name's Michelle. I am with Movoto Real Estate, a local real estate group up in Palos Verdes. We're right by the. We're right in the mall, actually. Um, we wanted to award this to our mayor. Sorry, in recognition of beautifying our community and the efforts have gone unnoticed. So, oh, thank right. you yeah. so much. Yes. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. This is beautiful. Thank you, Michelle. So nice to have a, another. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> have to put this in the Don't get too comfy. That's You're up. I'd like to introduce the mayor, Susan Brooks. Thank Say you. a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. Uh, well, thank you, everybody, for being here today. This is uh, another day in paradise. Maybe the sun's not here, but that might be a good thing because we know we, we're going to probably put a little bit of shade activity in this beautiful environment, probably around some of these park benches. But uh, it is such a glorious opportunity to be here. It's actually very meaningful to me. This is a very heartfelt um, situation because we did come to a decision in 2013 when we looked at a parks feasibility study to see what we want to do for the whole city. And it was starting to team with social media and people all over the place. And we made a decision that less is more. And that, in fact, it is best to really move forward with that in our city as we go forward with this and other projects. So this is a groundbreaking event for many reasons. And if, if I can't thank anybody enough, I, I can't thank, first of all, the four men who really helped. And they were so instrumental, Noel and Les and, and uh, John Freeman and Jim Moore, who's not here today. But it did, these gentlemen went on and on with a different staff. But it wasn't until we got a new city manager, Doug Wilmore, right back there, who, that we started to see these amazing transitions. And, and Doug Wilmore, and I have to say that if we did not have Corey Linder, our director of Parks and Rec. I don't know that this would be not only not ready yet, but I don't know when it would be ready because you really did a magnificent job in working with everybody to make this happen, Corey. Congratulations. So on behalf of our council members, John Cruikshank and Eric Alegria and Ken Dida, and I see Jerry DeHovic, our mayor pro tem, now back there. Uh, we do want to really welcome you all here and say thank you for for um, being part of this new opportunity. If you think about what this might be in not just years from now, as, as you pointed out, Noel, but if you think about decades from now and your children and your grandchildren, the opportunity for them to play on these, some, around some of these boulders and in some of these uh, natural natural environment and have a nice picnic at the same time, you're going to see the blood, sweat, and tears that went into keeping this natural. And that's a big deal in today's world. It's really hard because everybody wants to overpopulate everything. And it was this neighborhood, really, that moved this forward to the extent that you have so that we could keep it uh, semi-rural, which is what the city is all about. I say this to our founding father, Ken Dida, right here. So um, thanks to our fellow council. Thanks to my fellow council members and everybody here. But thanks so much to the staff and to the volunteers who've really worked. Um, 
the, also the the professionalism of the design consulting firm of Withers and Sandgren and the pub construction company. So kudos to also over 60 volunteers who participated in the June 30th and July 14th Lower Hess cleanup days here. Your spirited community activism really makes a difference. And I see Nancy over there, and I know that you were instrumental in a good part of this as well. So I'd like to echo Corey's comments about the crucial involvement of the Pacific View HOA, and specifically the four gentlemen I mentioned. So Lower Hess could not have happened without you gentlemen, and without the community here. Gentlemen, please come forward. Uh, it is my pleasure to unveil a plaque to you honoring you and the entire Pacific View Homeowners Association for your tireless efforts. And in closing, it is a tremendous source of pride and personal satisfaction to see this wonderful project finished. So why don't we all come over here so we can all see this. So first, we need to acknowledge this. So on behalf of the council, I, I also want to thank the council for the lovely plaque that they've given the council. And now for, for the community here, it's not the bag. It's a special acknowledgement to Noel Park, John Freeman, Les Chapin, and Jim Moore, and the Pacific View Homeowners Association for your dedication to the Lower Hess Park project and your community. God bless you. Who knew? Thank you. Where's, where's Les? Oh, Les, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, now, if you'd like, um, this concludes our ceremony. However, we need the uh, the ribbon cutting. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Climb in. I feel just quite blessed, frankly, just to be a resident, uh, not to mention to have an opportunity to serve the community in the capacity as a city council member, just because our community is so special because of the way that our community, our staff, and the council, and previous councils certainly, have worked in conjunction with one another to create this. This is beautiful. Uh, I have a young family, so uh, I have a feeling that we're going to be enjoying this uh, particular park uh, for many, many years to come. So. Uh, thank you to all the volunteers and, of course, all the members of the HOA and the community and everybody that contributed to it. It is really gorgeous. If you haven't been to Lower Hess Park recently, certainly come out and see it. You know what I love about it? Like you said, there's just so much, the hiking, just the beauty of it all. You have a young family, and they will be out here, just like Corey said, getting a little dirty and seeing all the plants and the nature out here. Yes, that's very true. Very true. And if my kids are getting dirty, it means Dad's getting the dirty as well. So that's just par for the course. Yes. John, just talking about this project and, and why it's so important for the city to to make this a priority so that people have nature to look at. Well, I mean, there's all these houses around here, and before it was just basically, like they said, tumbleweeds and, and an unused piece of property, and we're able to... Um, create this wonderful space for kids and people with their dogs and families to enjoy. Anytime we have an opportunity to do that, we want to do that. What I love is even as we were just setting up out here, there's people with their dogs walking, hiking. They're already using this. It's amazing. I know during the ceremony, I was watching that too. I was watching a jogger jog up the hill and a guy with his dog and, and uh, they just seemed, it just seemed like it's such a natural park and a great place, and the and the really th that made this ha what made it happen was the volunteers and the people that live in this area. They they saw had a vision of making it something better, and they stepped up, and they took their time to make this happen. and And we have a great city staff that that helped them with their vision, and were able to make it all happen to what we see today. So it's really beautiful. Well, first of all, congratulations to all the residents who were involved. This would not have been possible without them. As you said, it was a very long time in coming, multiple years, probably five or six years total, uh, multiple gyrations, multiple versions of what they wanted at this park. There were tennis courts, basketball courts, all kinds of fun things. But as we sit here and look around today, how beautiful the uh, 
just the open space and the rural nature of the entire park. I have to congratulate staff and everybody involved. It's important, as the mayor said earlier, that, that you know, we are a semi-rural community and we want to keep that nature and ambiance. And this, this totally epitomizes what we stand for here in RPV. For someone like you that really appreciates this, what's it like to see this come to fruition? You know, I was just telling Corey, I remember about six years ago when my daughters were a lot younger, we came out here for about three quarters of a day pulling weeds and all that. And, the, you know, the we have a great community, as you know, but we are so full of volunteers doing things such as picking weeds and hauling dirt and picking up trash. But it's it's just... You know, it brings the community together, and this is something, again, as the mayor said, that our kids for decades to come and their families will hopefully enjoy and look back and say, wow, you know, the residents and the council did a good thing not, not concreting everything over here. So it's, uh, it's great.